Hello and welcome to the first Inventory Pro tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial we're going to set up all the basic requirements to get started with Inventory Pro. So first off I'm going to create a new folder because we want to do everything outside of the Inventory Systems folder because in case of an update you might lose your file so it's wise to um, save everything outside of the Inventory system folder. So I'm just going to call this Inventory Pro Tutorials and in here I'm going to make a folder where I'm going to save all the items that we'll be creating using the editor. Alright, so first off, there's. Let me just make a new scene real quick. And also save that in there. Okay. Um, in the new version, we have a setup wizard which is under Tools Inventory Pro Setup Wizard. And once we open this up, it'll say we have no managers. And the managers keep track of all the items in your scene and um, uh, handle all the databases. So you can simply click the Fix Now button, which will add a managers object to your scene. Just close this for now. Okay. So the next problem is that we don't have a language database and we don't have an item database. And the language and item database simply hold the information as it says. So the language database holds all of the language specific data and the item database holds all of the items. So we create one here. So create inventory pro and we create a new item database. And we can also create a new language database. Next, we need to assign those databases to our current scene. So as you can see here, we have the red um, field for the language database. So we can just drag that one in. And in the item manager, we also need to drag in the item database. Okay, just got that. Let's click rescan. Okay, so we don't have a player. We haven't filled out some fields, but these aren't very important right now. So let's just um, continue with the actual uh, setup. So the main editor. Um, the first time you start the main editor you'll get an, a warning or an error that it doesn't have a location where you want to save the path or where you want to save the items. So all of your items that you create inside of Inventory Pro will be saved as prefabs so you can actually uh, change the models and add custom components and such. Um, and Inventory Pro needs to know where you want to save those items. So if you click set path we can choose a folder. It has to be inside of the assets folder uh, can't be outside of it. So I'll just use the previously created items folder. And as soon as we do that, it's, uh, it's done. Now we get the um, the overview where we can select the database we would like to edit using the editor. And the green one that's highlighted here is always the one from your current scene. So in most cases, you'll likely want to use the green one. All right. So we don't have any items yet, but uh, let's just go through all the editors so you can see what they do. So we have categories, and each category or an item can get categories, and each category can have a specific cooldown. So assume you would make a new category here for food. You could give this a cooldown of 10 seconds, so all of the items that share the food category will get a 10 second cooldown once they're used. And you can obviously mix and match. Uh, we have properties, which allow you to add specific data to items, and you can give them a custom name, for example, strength. Uh, the way you want to show it, this will help you define how the value is shown. So for example, as you can see here, we have zero, which is the current value. But we also have one, which is the maximum value. So we could do one, and as you can see, we have five out of a hundred. So it actually shows the uh, the current value and the maximum value. So you can mix and match and do lots of fancy stuff on how you want to format this. Um, the base value or the start value. So assume you have health, you probably want to start with a full amount of health. You can set this to 100 and then you'll start off with 100 health and of course the maximum value and if we want to use this in our status calculation which we'll get to in a later tutorial. Then we also have the rarity editor where we can specify the rarity for each um, type and that's something like um, normal which is usually color white and then we have rare which is usually blue. And you can create all of these here. Uh, make sure they're in the right order though, so from uh, low to high. Um, and each rarity can have its own dropping object. So in many games you drop a pouch or a, 
uh, treasure chest instead of the actual item, the actual model. So you can specify an object here which you like to drop instead of the actual item. So you can drop a pouch or a, or a treasure. And we also have the currency editor. Inside of a currency editor we can define um, any type of currency we like. So we can, for example, choose gold. Um, description is not necessary. You can choose an icon we wish to use. So for example, gold. And same here, we can use the formatting uh, the way we like. So as you can see here, this is the outcome if we have one gold. So if you have something like rupee, rupees, it will actually, for a single, use a single name for plural name, the plural name. All right, we can also convert currencies between different currencies. So for example, if I make another currency for silver, Grab an icon for that. We can now add a conversion here. So we can say we want to be able to convert gold to 100 silver. And the auto conversion, <coughs> sorry, the auto conversion allows us to convert um, the currencies automatically when they're needed. So for example, if I have uh, one gold and zero silver, and let me just show that like this. I have one gold and zero silver, and I want to buy an item that costs 10 silver, but I don't actually have 10 silver, but I do have one gold. One gold is worth 100 silver, so we can actually convert this to zero gold with 10, uh, 90 silver, assuming you want to remove 10 silver. So that's what we can set up here. So um, if we disable the fractions, uh, to not allow fractions. So if we have gold, we don't want to be able to have 1.1 uh, gold. So instead we'll disable the fractions and all the fractions we want to convert to a lower value. So for example, silver. silver. So if we get 0.1, so 1.1 gold, the 0.1 is worth 10 silver in total. So we can actually convert that down to silver and we can do that here by converting the fractions. Um, Silver, we can also convert the maximum amount. So, for example, once we hit 100 silver, we want to convert this to gold. So, we can say it here one silver is worth 0 0.01 gold, and we want to use the auto conversions. Okay, and we can add another one, for example, uh, copper. Which can be converted to silver. And the silver can actually be converted down to copper as well, which is worth 100 copper. This one as well. Uh, all right. Should I do it? Um, and then we also have the equipment editor. Um, inside of the equipment editor, we can add a specific type. So, for example, we grab one with our item picker. And if we take the equipable inventory item, for example, and hit scan, um, with reflection, we grab all of the possible items that we ha or the values that we have. So these are all controlled inside of script and we can't directly use them from our property editor. So instead we can use reflection to grab those as well. And we can add this in. So, now we'll grab all of the weight from all the items that are equipped to the character and sum them up and add this to the status. So inside of your stats, then you'll have a weight variable with the sum of all item, all the weight of all the items. All right, and then we also have equip types. Um, this one's pretty specific, so we'll deal with this in a, in a later tutorial. This crafting editor, I'll cover this one later as well. The language editor allows us to set up all of the language specific things. So for example, whenever an item uh, cannot be dropped because of uh, a specific flag, you can uh, specify the message here, which will be shown inside of the, uh, in the inside of the message log. And then lastly, we have these settings. So a couple of things we have to do inside of our settings is configure the button prefab. And the button prefab is the um, 
slot or object that will be used inside of the inventory. Um, we can select that here. So if you just, and if you search for UI underscore item underscore prefab, um, let's see, it's the second one for me. The one from the demo assets UI UI underscore prefabs folder um, is the object that we want to use. Um, it's it's a predefined one. You can obviously define your own, uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just use the existing one. All right. Next, we need the UI root, so we'll actually have to create one. So I'm just going to create a new canvas, which also creates the um, event system, which is quite important. All right. So let's assign the canvas in our settings. And that's all we have to configure here. So next let's set up the inventory the inventory window and uh, fill the inventory window with some slots. So inside of our canvas I'm just going to create a new panel and pin this to the right side. And if we go to add components and then inventory system windows, we've got a bunch of windows that we can use. Um, and let's just start with the inventory. All right, first off, we get a uh, UI window and there is a UI window, which is a static window, but we can also use a UI window interactive. And the interactive window, as you can see here, allows for a key combination that we can use. So for example, we can add one and whenever we press I, this window will show, and when we press I again, it will hide. Um, we can also reset windows on start of the game, which is by default, so we could um, move the pivot over to the side. So now, once the windows is, window is reset to position zero, 0, it will be right here, so which allows us to create a lot of windows outside of the um, canvas area and then model them outside of here and at the start of the game they will all be reset inside of the window and hidden. All right. So a couple of things we have to do. The first thing is we have to create a container. So first let's create that. Let's create a new panel. Um, and this is gonna be our, uh, our container. Let's make it a little smaller. And one thing we actually have to do, which I almost forgot, is define the collection name. So each collection has to have a specific name, uh, a unique name, which is used for uh, saving and loading. So be sure to give it a, a unique name. So let's just call this one inventory. Um, here we can define the item button prefab, which is as we defined in our settings. Here we define the item button prefab, which is global for all of the items. So if we leave this blank, we'll just grab the one from the settings. Uh, if you want to override it, you can actually specify it here. So we can leave it blanks just uh, just fine. We have manually defined collection, which allows us to grab the uh, slots inside of it. Um, if we disable it, it will actually generate those for us, which is what we want right now. Um, sorting button, let's just leave that blank for now. Extended collection as well. The scrolling rect allows us to um, uh, reset the scroll rect after you increase the size. So it uh, it's only a visual thing. Um, a shared collection allows you to share it between multiple characters. So assume you have five characters in your scene and you make a shared collection, that inventory will actually um, belong to all those players instead of one specific player. And you can also define priorities. Uh, the higher the priority, the sooner the item will be stored in here. So the more priority um, this specific collection will get whenever placing a new item. Right, so we have also have uh, initial collection size, which is the size of slots that we want to generate um, whenever we start the uh, whenever we start the game. Um, these are override methods. So whenever we use an item, which is either by right clicking or or by using it from a skill bar, or it doesn't really matter how. Um, whenever we use it, we actually want to move it to the bank. So if the bank is open, the bank window, and we use something from this collection, it will actually move to the bank instead of actually being used. 
and we can do the same for selling. All right, these are just audio clips whenever did you want to play whenever a specific action occurs, but let's just leave this blank. We also have restrictions, so um, Inventory Pro is not restricted to a single inventory, so assume you want to make a second inventory, like so, and give this one a higher priority, so all items will be stored in here first, but I can also give it filters, so I can say I only want to store items of type uh, consumable inside of this window, so now we can only store consumable items inside of uh, this specific window, and all the other items will be stored in the right one. But uh, let's just continue with this one for now. Um, and at the bottom, which is quite important, we actually have a couple of restrictions. So um, you can restrict a collection or an inventory by weight. So assume you hit a total weight amount of 100, you can no longer store any items inside of it. And we also have these restrictions here below. So if we can drop items from this collection, so in this case we do, uh, the collections are these settings are on all collections so they're also on the bank etc so you also wa always want to check these when you configure a new collection so if we can use an item from this collection so this is our inventory obviously we can and if we can use an item from a reference which means that if we have a reference like the skill bar and we use an item from the skill bar um, is it allowed to refer to this inventory so for example if you have an item in your skill bar um, which refers to an object in the bank, you obviously don't want to actually use it because you could use items that are uh, in your bank while you're not using your bank. All right, so we got that all set up. And actually, I think this is enough to make it work. So let's just uh, try it out. All right, so as you can see, we now have a slot, which appears to be just a single slot, but if we look here, we actually have a whole bunch of them. So we actually want to um, show these properly inside of the entire window, and we can use the, we can do that using one of Unity's uh, groups. Let's see here, layout, and we can use various groups we like, but in this case, uh, a grid group, where is it? There, would make the most sense. So we can, create cells of 40 by 40 inside of this window and it'll format all of those uh, slots for us. So if I open it up now you can see that all those slots are defined in here. Uh, one last thing we can actually do is add a draggable window onto this. So if we just search for draggable window we can add it and it's got a couple of settings that we can use so we can prevent it from going out of bounds. So if you try to drag it outside of the screen, it will actually stop the player from doing so, from losing windows. Um, you can bring windows to the foreground or the background um, and the maximum foreground index, which is actually the uh, index inside of the hierarchy. All right, so got it now, click I, and we can drag it around. And the final thing we have to do is create a player. Um, and I've created a or I've included the standard assets in the project. So in here we have a prefab for Ethan, which is the uh, standard player that comes with the standard assets. Uh, let's just uh, reset his position, create a ground plane. All right. And we have to attach the inventory player now in the prefab that is included in a project, the inventory player component is already attached, but if it's not, attach it yourself. Um, and in here, all the references are set to the player's um, collections. So in this case, we have a reference to the inventory we just created, because the inventory belongs to this specific player. So you can actually have multiple players with uh, each their own inventory. Um, and once we create a skill bar, once we create a character collection, we'll be uh, defining them here as well. Alright, that's it for this uh, tutorial, and hopefully you'll see you in the next one.